Right, guys, welcome uh, to the THQ podcast. Um, I'm joined with me today today um, by Joe Duffy. Um, let, I'm just going to introduce Joe um, and explain to everybody who he is um, to me. And I've been training with Joe for the past uh, 14 months now, is it, Joe? Um, and we've, been, uh, we've made some really, really good progress. Um, originally, when I first got into contact with Joe, what I was actually trying to um, achieve was to... Um, for, for years, obviously, many of you know that follow me on the, and through THQ is I've always tried to get really, really lean and then find myself like rebounding um, throughout the year. So I felt like I needed um, a coach to really sort of guide me and tell me that I was all right as long as I was happy with my physique and then stop that rebound phase. I really needed that. And that's what Joe has given me. Um, obviously, many, many of you have watched my videos. I've maintained my freestone weight loss this time. Um, maybe I was not as lean as what I've always been, not shred as what I've always been, but I've never um, has been as happy with my physique. Um, and Joe has really helped me do that. One of the main values why I've continued um, coaching with Joe is that I've actually really understood from a client's perspective um, sort of why THQ has, has been so successful over the years. And it's because like a coach will be in your head 24-7. Uh, and I have like one 30-minute meeting with Joe um, every every week. And to be honest, it's really not about that 30-minute meeting. It's literally the fact that he's in my head 24-7. Um, and that is the value of a true coach is really get into someone's head. And, and me doing this, learning this from being a client's perspective really helps me um, add value to THQ members. So um, Joe, I want to thank you for that, mate, first off. And if you just give us a short description about who I mate, so for everyone listening. No worries. Thank you for the uh, for the intro, mate. Very kind. Um, so yeah, I work. I'm a self-employed coach um, from M10. Um, so I work out of M10. So I'm a mentor, um, an educator, personal trainer, and then online coach. So we do quite a lot of stuff um, within the industry over there. So obviously. Aside from just one-to-one -one and uh, online coaching, like kind of personal training, obviously the mentoring. So we mentor coaches all over the world. So personal trainers, uh, we have full mentorship programs. We do education weekends. We do theory weekends. Um, so basically just upskilling the industry um, as, as much as what we possibly can. So at the, at the minute, I'm kind of at the forefront of all that. Um, obviously, everything's on hold at the minute with the situation that we're in. But yeah, it's a very fortunate, good position to be in and just kind of looking at this industry get better and better and better because there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, but ultimately, that's what that's what our goal is um, with the industry moving forward. So. Yeah, awesome. Well, you're 100% achieving that. I mean, just, just from the short period of time I've been training with you, like, I feel like I've been able to add so much value to our, our members as well. So, yeah, Good. that's Good. spot on. So, Thank you for that. one of the things I wanted to talk about was, like, client struggles. Now, um, obviously, we was having a conversation earlier in the week about sort of how we can sort of really help. Like, there's never been a more important time for someone to have a personal trainer now. We, we were saying that. So, what, um, what have your clients struggled with, like, mainly with life without the gym for a few months? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the first thing, obviously, um, from a business standpoint, is what we needed to do as cleanly, as effectively as possible is kind of get people transitioned over. So obviously, most of the guys that we're working with, were working always on a one to one basis. So in the offset of obviously, when this lockdown happened, and everything was up in there, people are panicking, people are wondering what's going to happen, or are we still going to be able to get results and this and that. So it was that transition period getting everybody onto an online standpoint, making sure people are set up, making sure workouts and everything are set up. So, I mean, th this, this is no real reason why anybody still can't progress. We can all progress in the situation. There's always a way around it. You just got to accept what happens at the time, because like I say, most people get into this kind of panic mode and then they, they make bad decisions. So this is the importance of a coach. And just obviously going on what, to, what you were speaking about a minute ago with yourself, Carl, is obviously the accountability standpoint. So it's absolutely essential. Now, obviously, from even us, us guys, obviously, you've got accountability with myself and where I work, obviously, the guys that I work around at M10, we're always accountable for each other. So even as personal trainers in the industry, we still need coaches. We still need people to look out for us. So just as much as what, obviously, our, our, our clients do. So like I say, the first thing is getting that transition done firstly and then obviously getting people set up in terms of like obviously training programs and, and nutrition obviously everybody's in a different position some people have access to home gyms some people have nothing some people only have body weight so they're worrying thinking that oh what's going to happen with this so just from a diet standpoint anyway 
getting people set up with that first is it's no different. It's no different than if we were working in a gym. So, I mean, I get a lot of questions at the minute from coaches on the mentoring program saying, what should we be doing with nutrition with our clients at the minute? Should we still be pushing nutrition? And it's like, why, why does it have to change? If you approach change with your clients and say, yeah, because of everything's happening, we need to change things. People are essentially going to have lack of confidence in that. So there's no reason why we need to change it. Now, don't get me wrong. Let's, let's, use, let's use food as an example. So people at home, they're with the kids, they sat at home, it's boredom. People get bored very, very easy. And what do we all do when we get bored? We eat, right? So a couple of key things that I've been focusing on with my guys is hydration is the first thing. We need to focus on hydration. Everybody should be making sure that they're drinking enough water. As a rule of thumb, a good, a good way to go with this, uh, per 20 kilos of body weight, you want about a litre of water. So 60 kilo person, three litres of water throughout the day. Usually when we're dehydrated, the first thing that's going to happen is you're just going to crave, and then you're going to go to the fridge, go to the cupboards, and you're going to start eating crap. When you start eating crap, you get into this bad kind of spiral and then it goes out. You keep going, you keep going. You get demotivated because you've not eaten very good. And then you keep obviously spiraling out of control from there. So that's one of the most important things of why we need to kind of, as coaches anyway, be there, be accountable, be motivating for people and making sure people are on point, like checking in all the time. Um, just little things like that is what can set somebody up at the start of the day for success that day you know, rather than setting up in a bad mindset, getting out of bed late, eating chocolate and stuff like that. I know obviously we've had the Easter weekend, which is understandable, but it's very important that we still maintain our current structure from like what we were doing in the gym. Like I say, it doesn't have to change. Um, what, what's been the biggest struggle you've noticed with your clients, with the diet though? What's that one thing that maybe someone that is normally on it, what sort of their problems been, their issues? I think, honestly, it comes down to what we were just speaking about in terms of the mindset issue. And then obviously because of the, the mindset, everything's changed. But then obviously with the boredom as well, people, obviously, if you think about people on a day to day at work, they're busy. They're not doing what they're normally doing now at home. So a couple of things that I've said to my guys is if you're at home, you think that you're getting hungry, even though you've eaten, like I say, it's going to be boredom. You've got to keep busy. You've got to keep doing things or like doing things around the house. If you feel as though you're starving, go and clean, don't go and wash your car. You know, people have got loads of jobs and stuff that need to be done around the house that we've all been putting off for ages. This is a perfect time to get them done, you know, get the garden work done and stuff like that. And just get into little habits moving forwards. Cause we know that if you start off with one to two weeks of making little changes like this during this lockdown period, that's going to be a, a That's going to be a, something that's instilled for the foreseeable future until we get out of this lockdown. Like I say, the, the start is key because you set yourself up moving forwards. Mm. Uh, but like I say, the mindset has been a big issue. Um, but we'll, we'll, I think we'll touch on that a little bit later on anyway. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I agree entirely. And I don't think there's ever been a better time really to sort of work on these habits because we're not rushing about. We haven't got that sort of demand outside when we can actually create our own skills inside and they, they can then lead us after this lockdown. Yeah, 100%. So what we've like worrying about, we've had a lot of questions about people, obviously, um, with our sessions in the gym, we just do weight training and obviously we really aim to sort of get as much muscular gain as possible. Like, has he had any worries about losing muscle, losing gains, or is there any yeah. the people that can do? Yeah, I mean, obviously, again, as a coach, it's vital that obviously when we're speaking to our clients, that the education process is the first thing that we go by. So people are not going to lose any tissue. They're not going to lose any muscle um, during this period, unless we go from literally training normally to then really, really poor diet, no training whatsoever, poor sleep, poor digestion, poor health. Yes, then you might potentially lose, lose a little bit of muscle tissue and potentially regress. However, if you're still maintaining a good structured program, and like I said at the start of this uh, podcast, all of our clients are now set up. We have created programs that range from a beginner body weight through to advanced body weight. You've got resistance bands, dumbbells, kettlebells, obviously certain people with other gym equipment and stuff. So the, from a, in, in terms of losing, losing progress or losing um, muscle, it just will not happen. Your body's very resilient. It doesn't want to get rid of tissue like what people think that they are doing. Um, so it's not something that anybody really should be worried about. Um, especially from a general population standpoint anyway. Yeah, so even, even if they've had that, they're 
sort of intense workouts and they're not maximizing as much as what they can they don't need to worry too much about dropping too much muscle absolutely not mate honestly if anything because obviously like stress levels and things are starting to get lowered in terms of like allostatic load across the week so and what i mean by that is if you imagine that you've got let's take just john for example who's training three four five times a week he's working every day he's really busy he's taking the kids about he's shopping he's, he's going out the weekends and going on walks and stuff obviously now we're locked down that allostatic load across the week that stress level across the week has dropped massively so from a recovery standpoint we're all in a massively better position than what we were prior to this lockdown period so from a stress standpoint and like nervous system standpoint with your body you're in a better position to actually maintain tissue as long as like i say we are still working out we are still creating some form of stimulus on the body so we are thinking about obviously if it's a body weight workout we are trying to contract muscle we are trying to make sure that we're placing as much tension on that muscle as possible. We're stimulating his body as much as we possibly can. It, will, it just will not happen. Uh, like I say, the human body is a very, very resilient thing. It doesn't want to lose tissue as, as much as people think. Now, don't get me wrong. If you've let's go at the other end of the scale, take a bodybuilder, for example, that's obviously walking around with a lot, a lot of tissue. If you put him in a position where he's had the best equipment in the world, and then all of a sudden now he's just got a room in his body weight, Potentially, yes, that person may lose a little bit of tissue, but I think, granted me and you, I don't think we're working with people right up at that level. Um, and those guys, anyway, they usually do have the equipment to be able to maintain it. So it's not something that anybody should worry about. It just, it just will not happen. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And like um, that, that I, I pretty much, I put a post similar to that. It literally depends on what level you're at. And I don't think anyone that follows our videos that is part of THQ needs to worry. And too much about that so no that, that's really good no all mate we've we've had we've probably had about up to now probably about 30 new online clients that are coming in that have probably followed us for a while um and then some of them have come to body weight um so sort of just got no equipment at home and then just started training with body weight um obviously we 100 percent said that we can still get decent gains but is there any sort of tips that you get from a newbie just having body weight trying to build muscle and is it possible to obviously build muscle um, from body weight from scratch. Absolutely. I mean, for beginner people coming in that have not really done very much kind of body weight um, exercises in the past, they're the people that's actually probably going to get better results and what more kind of intermediate to advanced kind of um, trainees or, or clients are going to get. So absolutely. As long as the key thing that we need to be focusing on, and again, this is the importance of why you need a coach to be able to watch over what you're doing is it's execution. So obviously we've got beginner people that will have structural issues. They will have, if we look at ankle, knee, hip, lumbar, thoracic, cervical, spine, there's an awful lot there that can go wrong. So if we just give somebody a crazy workout, jumping around and kind of, and they're not used to this, they're setting themselves up for, or you're setting them up for failure, essentially. You need to make sure that the workouts that you're prescribing to people to follow are congruent with who they are and their structure, their body and their level of where they're at. So again, it can be so, so simple. I've got some programs for some of my guys who've recently started. It's just four exercises, mm -hmm. three to four sets of four exercises, really, really important kind of focus on tempo. And that's it. And it, it could take somebody 20, 30 minutes and they might think, oh, this, is this working? Is it really doing what it needs to do? Well, for people like what you just spoke about, 100% that's working. And like I say, people can progress. And if you do a bodyweight exercise correctly, it's very, very difficult to actually perform. Um, so obviously, a lot of the times, people may just rush through an exercise. They're just thinking of moving from A to B. If you think of like, if, let's use a push-up, for example. If you think about what the old goal of a push-up is with the chest, like a chest press, you're trying to take the pec from a lengthened to a shortened position. If you think about that internal cue, of that actually working, it's much harder than just pumping up and down, doing a push-up. You've got a lot of progressions there. So for people that actually focus on exercise like that, yes, mate, 100%, they will progress. Awesome. So there's no really difference in the way that should they do the movement, whether they're doing body weight or in the gym for initial training. Exactly the same. And one thing as well, like, obviously, when you go back into the gym and we have got all the kit available, this is a great time whilst we're at home to spend time trying to learn how to contract muscle. Because we know that it's, a muscle grows through the contractile ability, right? And if people want to put muscle on, they want to put tissue on, they want to build a better physique, they need to learn how to contract tissue. So this is a great time. We've got lots of time at home. 
we're not doing much throughout the day. I know obviously some guys are still working, but still we have more time than normal. It's a great time to focus on things like that, focus on how to do that. So when we do come out of this lockdown period, we're in a much better position. And not just from like a trading standpoint, there's so many benefits that we can get from from this lockdown period rather than trying to focus on negatives. We can improve digestion. We can improve our sleep hygiene. We can take someone that's been going four, five, six hours sleep every day to now getting seven or eight hours a day, going to bed at a reasonable time, waking up refreshed in the morning. You take that person straight back into a gym routine. They're going to progress much faster if we can cover these bases now. It's a perfect opportunity to do that. So, so for a mindset point of view, is that it, that obviously the, the using this opportunity is something that they wouldn't have had before, and then they're going to progress like a hell of a lot quicker. So Massively, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, the mindset issue in itself, uh, like this is, in my personal opinion, this is the biggest factor. This is the biggest factor that as coaches that we're dealing with, clients that they're dealing with, like even ourselves with his own training. Because I mean, I'm fortunate to obviously be training out of M10. Well, I'm assuming we'll talk about my training a little bit, little bit later on, but that's completely been turned uh, upside down on its head now. So we, what we need to do is we need to focus on this mindset and focus on like it's the perception of how we're looking at this internal or this whole environment that we're in now. If we perceive this environment to be a really bad situation and we get into that kind of negative mindset, constantly kind of fighting the tides all the time, it's going to result demotivation. People are going to get kind of angry. You're going to have a negative mindset for everything. So it's important at this stage that we constantly think about this as a, this isn't a bad thing. The one thing that I've said to a lot of my guys is write a list of the good things and bad things that's coming out of this lockdown. So yes, we don't have the gym. Yes, we can't go shopping. We can't go to the cinema and stuff like that. We can spend a lot more time with the kids, right? And for, for a kid's sake, they love that, right? We can spend more time with us dogs and pets and whatever. They're going to love that as well. We can spend better, more time sleeping. We can focus on education. You can learn a new skill that you might have been putting off for a while. Hmm. So there's so many different things that we can do. And we can look at this as a positive as opposed to thinking it's a negative. So I challenge people to actually write a list of pros and cons of what's actually coming out of this lockdown period. I guarantee you'll have just as many, if not a lot more pros than you will do bad things coming out of it when you actually look at most people's lifestyles awesome awesome yeah it's, it's amazing advice people yeah i hope people are literally got a pen and paper now and writing these down because it is a, an amazing time for them to do that huge mate yeah Let, let's talk let's talk about your your diet then like what obviously what what have you been used to before what's your calories been set and how have you had to adjust them um with this period yeah, so obviously from before, when obviously working your PT in on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm doing a lot of steps. Obviously, yes, we're still restricted now in terms of what we can walk, even though we can still go outside. My output essentially has dropped. Um, I've gone from obviously having a busy week being out, seeing people, to now essentially it's an office job. Like I was saying to you before, mate, we spend most of our days now on the phone, on the laptop. So there, there's always going to be a drop in output. And with the drop in output, there has to be a drop in input from food. Um, so one thing that I'm doing at the minute, because I'm not moving in the morning, I like to keep myself focused for my guys on the calls, on Zoom calls, workouts. I'm actually fasting. So I just incorporate a little bit of an intimate fast. Uh, intimate fast. So what I'll do is I'll, I won't eat anything. I mean, I've still not eaten yet. I'll start my eating window around about one, two o'clock. Um, but I've only dropped my calories a little bit. So about 350 across the day, because I'm still getting some steps in. I'm still working out. So I'm still getting a decent amount of output throughout the day, but I've just adjusted my food to suit. So I've just dropped it down by 350. Um, and again, like I say, with a lot of clients as well, the same things happen. We're about to drop some clients. Some people say the same, um, but again, it's very uh, individual specific. So the reason for the fast is just to control, you can just control in obviously that extra, extra calories that you're not having, um, or is it just a way of... Yeah, well, honestly, mate, not, yes, that is a factor, and it, it makes it easier to pull calories out and then give you a little bit more in the evening. But honestly, when I'm sat here on my laptop, I'm talking literally all day, I'm just much more switched on. My blood sugar is much more stable. I'm not craving things throughout the morning. I just drink black coffee, I drink water. It switches me on and it keeps me going. And like I say, I can put a better focus uh, and add more value to people when I don't eat, essentially. So, uh, But like I say, I've got some guys doing the same thing, and then other guys are just eating as normal. So I think, obviously, from a nutrition standpoint, when we look at blood sugar, it's very, very important that we do try and monitor that as much as possible because if we're eating normally and we're not moving, we get that big spike in blood sugar, and then, well, obviously, when it comes back down again, 
like what we spoke about earlier, that's where the cravings kick in. And then that's when we all start going back to the fridges and back to the, uh, the cupboards and we're trying to eat more stuff. So like just from like a macronutrient standpoint, putting in protein and fat meals throughout the day and saving the carbs to the evening just to help with the sleep. It's a great and easy way to obviously maintain that um, moving forward during this time. So, Yeah, that's good. I mean, I even might try to give that a go myself because I've, been, I've sort of got more um, understanding now of people that just get addicted to coffee. Because obviously, yeah. if you just sat there staring at a screen all day, I've been having like four cups of coffee a day. Normally, I've been on two cups of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I might interrupt that fasting myself and just see if that helps <laughs> me focus rather than smashing too much caffeine. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your workout. So you work out, what was you, obviously, you know, just put, there's no one going to be listening to this podcast that's got more training experience to you. What, what, have you actually, what are you having to do now? What, what kit you got home and how's that changed? So obviously, like I mentioned, I've gone from having all the equipment, the barbells and machines, the dumbbells at M10, absolutely perfect environment to now essentially I've dug the old and I'm sure a lot of guys listening to the podcast have done the same. I had a set of old rusty dumbbells, um, which to be honest, have not been out for years. So they only go up to 20 kilos. So it's literally all I'm working with. I've got a little EZ bar as well. Um, so in terms of equipment, it's terrible. Um, I'm not in a great position. I'm not in a position either because I live in a, a top floor apartment um, with my with my girlfriend. So I'm not really in a position where we have a lot of space. I've not got a garage. I've not got a driveway. I'm literally my workout moves around my apartment as I do it based on the space that I have. Um, so just as an example, a lower body workout that I did yesterday. Um, I've got an EZ bar. I can do like a relatively easy back squat and kind of goblet squat with it. Um, I did that in my dining room which is kind of transitioned into my living room. I then went and did a split squat, Bulgarian split squat from my sofa, which is literally just next to my balcony. Um, I did that for a few sets. I came into the bedroom here uh, because I've got a wood floor in. Um, as I'm trying to do hip thrusts, I slide along the floor. So I've had to wedge myself between my bed and between my chest of drawers just so that I'm not moving. Um, and then like a little Romanian deadlift, which was outside with a little bit more room on the balcony. So my workout essentially transitioned around my apartment. So I'm in a really bad position in terms of what I have available. But I woke up this morning, my legs are sore. I've managed to get a good workout in. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people listening are still in a better position than what I am. So it definitely can be done. And like I say, this is the importance of why you must have a coach during this time because that coach will be able to set you up no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. Um, so it's very, very, very important that we actually have a coach during this time. I was chatting to one of my um, mentees the other day and he, he said to me that one of his clients was going to cancel um, his subscription with his online training because he sees his online coaching and his PT as a luxury. Um, so as I just stopped in there straight away, I said, this is so wrong, right? People should not look at personal training as a luxury. We are an essential item. We're essential for, because we keep people out of the hospital. We keep people from seeing physicians. We keep people from seeing the doctors. We just need to make sure that people understand the value of what we're there for, you know, because essentially we can put, we can take somebody that's in really, really bad shape and put them in the best shape of their life and potentially put 10, 20 years on their life. So if anything, we should be one of the most important things. And the people that will potentially say that are, oh, I don't want to have coaching anymore. It's too much of a luxury. They just don't see the value in their own health. Um, so I think that's very, very important for people to see that. And like I say, just going back to the workouts with a coach, you have somebody to take you around wherever you are, whether it's a Zoom call, or a FaceTime workout or whatever is 100 percent doable and people can get results. Um, you've just got to reach out. You've just got to ask for it. Yeah. Awesome. There's, there's one thing I'd say I want to touch a little bit more about your training, but I just want to mention about like there has never been a more important um like reason to be healthy right now is it and like what you're saying then from like a coach um like having that not being a luxury like I don't see you I see you as like a need now I need you and you know that obviously we've um like over the years I've sort of obviously just been focused on body composition body composition and I've sort of neglected any sort of I mean as a byproduct I'm obviously a hell of a lot healthier but we've really started to work on my health especially like my cholesterol with my, my high cholesterol as well and we've like sort of dug into that and like the things I was looking back at the last 12 months and I think the things I've learned that sort of pretty much saved my health really as a sort of a health perspective has been invaluable so yeah so I don't see and I was thinking about it, if I didn't train with you what wouldn't I learn for this next year 
and then what wouldn't I live yeah. the year after that? And that's the way I see it really now. And I think that's a, just a yeah, brilliant way of looking yeah. at it. Yeah. I think when you, you've just got to look at progression, haven't you? Do, you? do you really want to progress through your life? Do you want to get better in all these different areas? Because like I say, yes, we're coaching people through just exercise and training. Or like I said earlier, the exercise and the training part and the nutrition part, that's the easy bit. Obviously, it's getting a mindset switched on and getting somebody motivated and transitioned over to get into that position where they are following good nutrition. They are following and getting the workouts done, you know. Now, obviously, don't get me wrong. We are life throws things at us so we understand that not everybody can be in this position one thing i always say to people is if you imagine like if you write down your three most important values in your life so let's say for example i use myself so i've got obviously my training very very important part of my life obviously my job my education and then obviously i've got my home life as well so if we use that as three points now if you imagine those in like let's use a triangle you got one two three in a triangle each corner of that, each end of that triangle is one of those points that I've just mentioned. So what we want to try and do is, during this time, is we want to try and keep ourselves in equilibrium right in the middle. So we've got a good amount of focus going to every last little thing. Now, if you imagine that, let's say, for example, that someone has some problems at work or they have to spend more time at work or they have some problems at home, they have to spend more time valuing that. What happens to that little dot where you sat in the middle is you actually move over to whether it's your personal life or whether it's your education or your job. Now, what happens there is it pulls your focus away from those other two points. So my point with this is, and this is to everybody else that's listening to this podcast, it's okay that that happens. If you value something else at that time and you're progressing some other area of your life, that's absolutely fine and it's nothing to worry about. But the key thing with this is it's the realization of what's actually happening. Because this happens with everybody. Everybody has all these values, but they'll move across to do something else and then they'll realize that the training's taking a back seat, their health's deteriorating, or whether it's their nutrition or their family life, like I said, whatever, they'll realize that that's potentially regressing, but they're not focusing on the other good things that's happening in their life as well. So this brings me back to obviously speaking about a coach. We need to get people to realize what these values are, what's important, and how to keep that balance of everything that's going on in your life, you know? Um, it's very easy to get lost in, in, in kind of the merry-go-round of everything. So yeah, yeah, no, I agree, I agree, hundred percent. So <clears throat> turning back to your training, so just to give people like a really clear view. So like, let's say, how have you adapted your training? Like, let's say, tell me what you were squatting before when using the gym, and now tell me what how you're having to adapt your twenty kg dumbbells. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Tempo, I mean, tempo, everything. Yeah, literally. So obviously just from a programming standpoint, frequency, because essentially exercise is much easier. I mean, if we look at, let's look at a load standpoint, what you spoke about a minute ago, from what we have available in the gym to what I'm using now, I've probably got a 50, 60% drop in load through most exercises, especially from a squatting standpoint. So if I'm working in a, in a massing phase, we'll call it, if I'm doing eight, six to eights, eight to tens um, in the gym, that's no longer that now. Yesterday, for example, my workout was an AMRAP. So as many reps as possible for four sets, which was across every single exercise that I did, just to create a certain amount of intensity. Now, am I doing that every day? Absolutely not. I'm just improving that intensity from the offset. So what I'll always try and do is I'll try and make sure I'm hitting a muscle group every other day because it's going to be easier for me to obviously manage what I'm doing. My recovery is a lot better. I'm sleeping a lot better. The load's a lot, a lot smaller. I can train more. So, for example, before is I wouldn't do a heavy leg session on a Monday, a Wednesday, a Friday and a Sunday, whereas now I can do a lower body workout every other day quite easily, as long as obviously I'm monitoring my recovery and looking at sets and reps. The same thing for the upper body as well. I can do that transitioning every other day from there. My workouts aren't long and they don't need to be long. Some of my workouts are 20 minutes. Some of my workouts are just over an hour. It kind of depends on what I'm doing at the time. I might even split workouts up between the, between the day. So I'll do 20 minutes three times a day as opposed to doing one hour um, in one hit. So I'm tracking what's happening. I'm still tracking load, believe it or not, and like in terms of reps and stuff, what I'm doing. So the logbook is still out, just so I'm aware of what's happening. Uh, but yeah, essentially, it, it's changed an awful lot. Tempo is a big, big focus. Like I say, that's what I've put out with a lot of my guys and a lot of my clients as well, because the load is essentially a lot easier now. We need to be slowing that set down. We need to be learning how to contract that muscle and feel what it's like to take a muscle from a fully lengthened position to a fully shortened position. So 
it's a big focus, obviously rest times as well. And like when you're working inside and you do have short rest times, it gets really hot <laughs> compared yeah. to if you've got aircon in a gym. So hey, the, the, there's no reason to drop off. Training carries on. We're still progressing. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to progress as much as I would do in the gym, but I'm at the very least maintaining where I'm at. Mm. But let's say muscle progress and fat loss aside, it's the mindset that's obviously a, a most important thing. We know when we do a workout, we finish that workout, we feel great after, right? Mm. That's the best thing. You, you leave a group class, you leave a PT session, you've got your heart rate up, you've had a good sweat session, you've progressed, you've got stronger. It feels good. You take that away, you don't no longer get that kind of dopamine release in your head, that feel good factor of that workout. So what, where do we get that from? Food, carbs and sugars and fats. So this, it's really, really important that we still keep these workouts in there. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. That's amazing. That, yeah, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not going to take up too much of your time anymore now because I know you know you're very busy. I really appreciate it. So if you could give people one thing to really take away now that they can, that's going to help them stay lean during this lockdown, what would it be? Or help them stay healthy? Or anything? What's one thing you want to take from this podcast? So I think going back to what we said at the start of this, so I think, like I say, one of the most important things during this time is, is motivation, right? It's very, very easy to get demotivated during this time. Now, obviously, yes, people have coaches and, and like I say, I'll be there for my guys as much as I possibly can. But we know that people aren't going to reach out all the time and people are often in their own heads and in their own mindset a lot of the time. So I've been guilty of this, obviously. I know I've experienced this before. So if you imagine that we've got all our guys now, we've gone from that ritual of training. So we've had the point where we finish work, we get changed, we get a gym kit on, we take it, we get us pre-workouts, we've got us coffees and, and we drive into the gym or we're listening to music, we're getting ourselves ready. We, and that's the process of us actually starting that training session, the ritual of the training session. Essentially, that's broken now completely because... For me, exactly anyway, I could be sat down on my sofa watching TV and I look to my right and it's like, there's my gym. So it's like, how do I get in that right frame of mind from going, being sat there watching a TV program or watching TV to now I need to get into that mindset of training? That kind of avenue between home or work or whatever to training is broken because it's just there next to us straight away. So my advice and what I'd suggest that most people do is we need to create a new ritual which associates us with training so that you've got that motivation. So one thing that I say is we're going to get ready for the gym, go into the bedroom, usual whatever, get your, get your gym kit on, still get your pre-workouts, get your coffees or whatever, get some music on Spotify, go outside, walk for 10 minutes, right? Whether it's round the block, up the road, round the field, listen to some music, drink your pre-workout, you're getting yourself into that mindset of you're about to go into the gym and you're about to train rather than it be just kind of try and build up that intensity, like I say, from sitting down on the sofa, yeah? Although, don't get me wrong, you are essentially, most people are getting up from the sofa, leaving the living room, and then walking back into the living room. <laughs> but the difference is when you walk back in, you're in that right frame of mind and you're ready to train. So there is a process, there is a ritual that we all still go through, and it's not just, like I say, just getting up off the sofa. So I think if we can do that, we're going to be in a much better frame of mind to train, and we'll train much harder as well. Yeah, that is amazing advice because I, I've definitely had that exact conversation with about 20 yeah. people. Like people just struggle. Maybe like the people that have just only been a members like a few months and know they've been like, they've, they've still not got it like sorted themselves going to the gym. Now they're having yeah. to do it in their own house and that is yeah. an amazing advice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. definitely. All right, Joe, thanks very much, mate, for taking your time. All right, mate. Thank yeah. you for inviting me on. No problem. Let me just, I'm just going to take this time, obviously, to just say a massive thank you for everything you've done for me for the last 12 months, and I'm looking forward to the next 12 months. 100%, mate. It's been great. We've got much more in store. Top man. Thank you, mate.